Hey everybody, I'm Stacy Lynn. Today is a special edition. It's my orchard edition. I have loved having this orchard in the light of the affairs of everything going on in the world. This has truly been a solace for me, a place that I could go and just be in just freedom and light and you know out in nature it's just been great and then i'm also dreaming of all of the things that i'm going to make with all of the fruit that comes from my orchard i am so thankful that we have one in a way it brings a little bit of security to me knowing that something that i have planted is going to produce something so some years might be good for some trees and some may not but you're going to usually get something that you can make jellies and different things from and i want to encourage you even if you have a small backyard or you just have to put something in a pot there's got to be something that you can do and I know that you can do it so I'm going to show you how or at least show you what we've got going on and let you choose what you want to do with that information so the first thing I want to show you is the mature pear trees over here so I'm going to take you in a minute and show you a smaller um, a smaller orchard it's new it's only been there for about 14 months we planted it last, last February but this is a beautiful, beautiful apple tree. And I love that it's got these beautiful um, flowers already on it. And we have a pear tree over here. And I'll show you the difference pretty soon. If you come right over here, you can see some mature pear trees that are right down here. I hope I don't step on a snake. In this row. I don't know if you can see that or not but um, the pear trees go all the way down there. And these have been here for about 10 years. They're about the size that they'll be, except for they're gonna grow kind of a little bit more wide um, and a little bit broader, but not a whole lot. So you need to plant them about 15 feet apart. So we'll come back over here and I'm gonna show you a leaf close up. And I am looking forward to showing you the difference between the pear trees and the apple trees. So the pear trees leaves are beautiful and glossy and they have a small serration right here. And you can look and they're, they're super glossy and in the back of them, they're still pretty glossy. I mean, they're, they're kind of flat, but it doesn't have like any of the hair on it. Um, so the canescence is over here, you will see that. So on the apple tree over here, and you'll see some apples growing on these trees, you have a, a, a larger serration right here. I don't know if you can see that. And then on the back, it's got a little bit more hair. It's a little bit more fuzzy. And then here's an apple already growing on this. And I just love apples. And here's some over here. They're kind of hidden right now because they're, you know, new. Um, and then there over here, we have some wild things growing. And I want you to see the difference between the wild and the, and the tame. And I'm about to show you some plum trees. But right over here are some Chickasaw plum. And they came from the Indians that used to live around here. Um, the Spanish brought over Chickasaw plums, the Chickasaw Indians moved in from the Midwest and they brought this plum with it. So here they are and you can see that the leaves are quite different and I'll be showing you a plum tree in just a few minutes. But we'll get a ton of plums and the wildlife around here absolutely love them. Okay, so, all right, so here we go now we're gonna go back to the next location and we're gonna drive there and so we will be we will be there in just a few minutes okay so as we go we're gonna be seeing a, um, a pecan orchard and about I don't know how many of our um, pine trees my boys were telling me we had a blight last year or no it was beetles and so about 60% or 40% of our pine trees have died. So we've got to go in and clear those out so that we don't continue to get them. So anyway, I'll hold this and let you go get in the car. Um, so anyway, we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna be cutting a lot of trees this year. And pretty soon we are going to um, be able to collect from our pecan orchard. 
so I'm excited about that. So I'll show you as we go through here. This used to be like super, and it's still beautiful. We've got the clover gr growing, a lot of uh, weeds that I still love because they're flowers. And um, it's been, it's just a beautiful time of year when you're driving around up here. But like over here, you can see that these pine trees have already started dying and they're looking pretty bad. Um, so it's not a good look. And then over to the left, we have the pecan grove and they're um, gonna produce some nice, uh, hopefully this year, they'll blow. They'll produce some nice um, <laughs> pecans. So that should be interesting. One of my kids is hanging on to the door of the, and he's a big kid, but um, on, on outside on the window. And so anyway, I just went over that big bump and who knows what, uh, he's still on it. So I guess we're good. So anyway, so we're just gonna drive right over here. As you can see out this window, put it down. You see all of these pine trees that are, are dead. So I am not happy about that at all. We should have cut them last year at the beginning of the year, made money off of that. Um, if we could have, especially now that the coronavirus has, has kept everyone from working, um, it would be nice to have a little bit more even in reserve. But hey, um, I will all get through it together. Okay, so we are now about to approach where the new orchard is. So I am happy to say we have some property that used to house I don't really know who it housed, but we'll see like trees and all, you know, like crepe myrtles and and um, shrubbery and different things just kind of growing there. And we're assuming that there used to be some houses out here. All right, so right up here, and this is where y'all saw me hunting earlier this year. Um, this is the same field. We are actually planting a lot of the fruit trees in the orchard for deer um, and you know for all kinds of wildlife but we get to enjoy the fruits of it as well so I have some pretty interesting stories to tell here I hope y'all will stick with me and listen to some of the stories so um, it, you know they're they're pretty interesting okay all right so the first thing we're gonna see all right so now we're at our new orchard so this is about 14 months old we planted this last february or so and there's like little gnats out here so you'll have to forgive me if i'm you know swatting at them right here on this first row are our plums and they all come from auburn university uh they they grow all of these and you know they're they're different varieties and they're just like so good i make plum jam you can find that on my recipe i mean on my website at stacylynnharris.com and look up plum jam uh in the um in the search bar but it is the best stuff in the world i do believe it's my favorite jam ever Okay, and then this, these are our peaches, and you have to plant more than one because they do cross-pollinate, you need them. Also, they're a little bit more um, hands-on rather than your pears and your apples that grow in this area and the figs and all. Um, it takes a little bit more effort to keep those alive. We have a lot of great peach varieties here. This one here is not actually a variety. This is kind of a different kind of peach altogether. And I love the flowers. I wanted you to see that. The, um, the um, fruit trees and all are just beautiful when they're blooming. This actually, instead of grafting this, this comes from a um, seed. So that makes it quite different than your regular grafted, um, your, your grafted fruit trees. So we have a grafting uh, episode on here on YouTube and you can see us actually grafting. We'll teach you step by step. And I also have that step by step on my website as well at stacylynnharris.com. You can just look up grafting and we have exactly what to do. So you can come right through here. It's pretty inexpensive to have your own orchard. And seriously, this is the time that I am thankful that we have one. I want you to see this particular fig. This row of um, trees are fig trees. And you can see that this looks dead. But the thing is, don't mess with it. Don't pull it up when you think your new fig is dead. Sometimes if there is a frost, 
at the wrong time or you know an early frost you might lose you might feel like you're losing your fig tree but a lot of times especially if you're in the south this is a great place to be growing them and they'll just come back they'll come back straight from the root so just leave those there we don't know we may lose a few down there but I'm kind of doubting it because they are such strong fighters so we have the fig trees and then um, right back here we have a pear tree and um, and it these are just beautiful that you know they they have the smaller leaves than than over where I showed you before because they're new and they have just a tiny you know serration but these are beautiful beautiful pear trees I just love them my son is an aficionado on pear trees he's written an entire book on pear trees and I hope that you can read that pretty soon we don't have it up yet but I'm hoping he's gonna just go ahead turn that into an ebook and you can know everything you need to know about pears and every variety from every part of the world so he's written about every single one of them so these are our apple trees here and we're gonna get some great apples I am so thrilled about apples I love making apple pear I mean apple butter and I remember going one time to the Amish community and they don't really like to talk, I think, to outsiders. And so I said, well, you know, well, how do you make this? And she was like, apple butter. And so I was like, okay. But um, now that I'm thinking about it, they may not have been speaking English. I don't, I mean, you know, they might not have had a lot of English speaking abilities. But anyway, that was kind of um, interesting. But, you know, she was pretty much right. It's apples and butter. Um, and so <laughs> anyway, um, so right through here, um, you know we have persimmons so persimmons grow really good out here and if you're going to choose a tree i absolutely love a persimmon they are so good and so different and i love the fruit and i love to put it in salads and and make sauces out of it put it over quail it's just delicious and then we come to our chestnut orchard so our chestnut tree orchard and i love this orchard here i love chestnuts and the the interesting thing is that there was a blight that hit from some um it was a nursery that got its um you know its its trees from japan in the early 1900s like 1904 in new york and a blight it had a blight and it was actually from china which is interesting the blight came from there but japan is who sent them over here and so all of our trees our american chestnut trees they went out with the blight starting in 1904 in new york they made their way down the east coast went all the way to alabama and so we no longer have the american chestnut we have the chinese chestnut and this is what grows now. So they grow pretty good right now. I wanna show you a mature one because I want you to see the beauty and the magnificence of this tree. Now, the story that I like about this tree is that there was a, a man living in Birmingham and he remembered in his childhood having a, an American chestnut tree and he wrote the song, um, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire. And he wrote that in memory of the time that he was a child and roasting chestnuts over the open fire. So here is the chestnut tree. And I can just see this on the side of a house. It's magnificent um, in Birmingham, Alabama. So I just love this. And another thing, if you have a southern landscape that I love to see are plum trees and figs. And if you had one of these chestnuts growing or a magnolia, man, you are in the south. And that just speaks southern, no matter what your house style looks like. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video today. There's been several things that I hope that you could take from it. And if nothing else, for you to grow your own fruit trees in your own backyard, even if it's just two just choose your favorite and i would probably go with a fig tree and a pear tree or an apple tree um it's hard to decide maybe even a persimmon but you know space the the bigger ones uh 15 feet apart but your fig trees they don't have to be that far apart so choose wisely i'm excited and i hope that you will tell me what you're growing in your yard and if you want to plant an orchard anytime soon i'll talk to you soon thanks a lot